This is our league, and this is your league. From the 55-yard line on CFL America Radio and the Sports History Network. spectators came to see. A tug of war, 22 nameless men grappling in the mud. They called it pro football. Those lines of script you just heard are from the 1966 film, They Call It Pro Football. And they deserve a special place in the history of NFL films. You see, they were the first words that John Facenda ever read for us. From 1966 until his death in 1984, John's voice was a key element in our productions. Before John, our voiceovers were done by play-by-play -play announcers. Now, they were perfect for getting down the facts, but sport also appeals to us because it exists in the realm of the imagination. And it was in this realm that John Facenda would become the once and future king. He made his debut by narrating, they call it pro football. <laughs> It starts with a whistle and ends with a gun. 60 minutes of close in action from kickoff to touchdown. This is pro football, the sport of our time. The men who play it are the best there are, disciplined professionals who perform on a stage 100 yards long. For the audience crowding the stands, the drama begins with a slap of leather in the song of Men in Motion. Eleven trained men face to face on the field of play. Each man a specialist, but one man stands above the rest. He occupies the most critical position in the game. He is the quarterback. He plots, directs, and executes the on-field fortunes of his team. The quarterback lives in a world of pressure. How well he lives with it and reacts to it determines how good he is. He must have a cool disregard for danger and the courage to take punishment. quarterback has two formidable allies. One is deception. By clever faking, he can confuse the defense and open a clear path for the play. His second ally is the forward pass. It's a long bomb. A screen pass over charging linemen. A bullet from the midst of a traffic jam. The pass in the hands of a pro quarterback is a bolt of lightning that can strike anywhere, anytime. This yard of space is called no man's land. 
football games are won or lost by control of this narrow strip of land, the battle for it is a violent one. The hands of combat. The hands of pros. This is the part of the game rarely seen by the spectator. The shattering impact of a block. The mountainous size of an onrushing defender. The splintering force of a far-arm shiver. One ton of muscle with a one-track mind. Down in the dirt, the lair of the lineman. This is where the game is played. The fringe of no man's land is patrolled by the linebackers. The search and destroy men of the defense. Number 50, search and destroy. Number 58, search and destroy. Sunday after Sunday, pro quarterbacks have learned that whatever play they call, a linebacker is likely to meet it head on. This is the face of the tiger. The passion in John's voice accentuated the drama of pro football. And it also brought out the poetry of the sport. Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? Go face them and fight them. Be savage again. The palms of your hands will thicken. The skin of your cheek will tan. You'll grow ragged and weary and wet. But you must do the best you can. Something somber in the skies. Something somber in the eyes of the men. Late autumn in the air, but something of winter in their faces. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold, and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Now return with John Facent, the actor. Although John was a local newscaster, he wouldn't have been recognized by too many people outside the Philadelphia area. Yet, he loved to act. And he was a true ham, but in the best sense of the word. And in 1980, we offered John a modest but meaty part that required him to appear in front of the camera instead of behind the microphone. Hello there, I'm John Facenda. You are about to see a sneak preview of a buffo, socko, big screen blockbuster soon to be released by NFL Films. Let's take a look, shall we? And as they say in Tinseltown, roll them. John was a good sport with a terrific sense of humor. Listen to these outtakes. Can I use the word frightfully rather than uh, frighting for Lily? I'm going to have trouble with that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, that is. That's a, that's a tough word. Okay, that's fine because we still keep the alliteration. Okay, so it's okay. frightfully instead of frighteningly. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was fiercely fought, but frightfully blocked. Let's take that over again. This name is Hawkins, John. An original Raider, Wayne Harkins. I got that wrong that time. 
Wayne Harkins. Shoot, now. Come on, John. And original radio... Oh, no, wait a minute. <clears throat> and original radio... No. I, I'm trying to figure out your, your damn hey, writing. Hawkins, John. Hawkins. Wayne Harkins. Yeah, I had it then. Wayne Harkins. No. Nope. Wayne Harkins. You stupid... We're ready to go if you are. Okay. Uh, John, on... He read our scripts as if he were uh, an after-dinner speaker at the Last Supper. Okay, John, right from the top and no mistakes. We're rolling. The Chiefs responded to the Viking score by returning to the strategy. Oh, now. Middle back of Don Dan... Oh, shoot. John, be careful these next names. Not even the wizardry of Fred Belitnikoff. Eh, you bastard name there. Men like Eyeshide and Buhler. Bueller, you son of a bitch. I hope I didn't say that lasty word. Forgive me, Mayor Cooper, Mayor Cooper, Mayor Max McCooper. I have sinned before thee and God and everyone. Right from the very... Our audience play. never heard the flaws. Just the finely tuned Nightmare. instrument. It was fiercely thought, but frightfully flawed. All of us enjoyed working with John, and he enjoyed the game, and it's evident in every script he ever read. The game is the man in the funny hat. And it's White Shoes Johnson and the Juice. And it's Franco's Army and Brian song. It's a place where new legends are born and old ones endure. The game is a time warp where the young dream of growing up and the old remember youth. And for a few hours on Sunday, neither fantasy nor reminiscence seems foolish. We return truly classic moments from John Facenda's career. You know, it was a special thrill to write a script for John Facenda. Just to hear him read your words. Uh, he could read a laundry list and make it sound dramatic. But not everyone could write for him. The lines had to be compact and balanced with strong verbs and only a few adjectives. And the metaphors, they had to be clear and crisp. We all knew that we had written something special when John would review the script and he'd say, Stevie, you've given me a horse I can ride. Well, here are some of the true thoroughbreds that John Facenda rode in championship style. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, on December 31st, 1967, the temperature was 15 degrees below zero. Lombardi's Packers and the Dallas Cowboys battled each other and the elements in a cruel rite of manhood that would decide the championship of the National Football League. the Packers won this game easily, as it first appeared they would. They would have been remembered as the team of the 60s. But by winning the game as they eventually did, they became a team for the ages, because the character of their performance surpassed the achievement itself. With only three minutes to play, all the hopes and dreams of an entire season rested on the shoulders of one man one old pro. One last moment for the master. Sensing the collapse of the cowboy empire, they stood like barbarians at the gates of Rome. The battering ram of the eagles was its defense. A unit that consisted of more spit than polish, more grit than glitter.
the Raiders now had a choice of two plans. They could fence in parry to protect their lead, or they could attack to destroy and demolish. The San Diego Chargers. While their offense flew on the wings of Mercury, their defensive line struck with the hammer of Thor. The young knights and the old warriors carved a battlefield in the sky. He doesn't swear, smoke, drink, or spit. His favorite beverage is milk. His favorite movie is The Sound of Music. And his middle name is Herbert. George Allen is so square, says a rival coach, that you could roll him on a Las Vegas craps table. Yet George Allen is a man for his time and certainly a man for his place. For three years, Blander waited on the sidelines. An old soldier, supposedly too ancient for battle, but too stubborn to fade away. Doug Atkins was like a storm rolling over a Kansas farmhouse. He came from all directions, and all there was to do was to tie down what you could and hope he didn't take the roof. Men of magic, men of muscle, the men of Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes, cheering their names. When John had a horse he could ride, he was at his best coming down the home stretch. No one could ring down the final curtain or raise a goosebump like John Facenda. Here are a few of his most famous final lines. Beneath a giant birch tree, where Father Soren once sat smoking a peace pipe with the Indians, rest the bones of Newt Rockney. His spirit has yet to be buried. Two teams have gained a champion's fame. Two teams of men both skilled and game. Men who have battled as brothers through combat thick and thin. And now they confront each other for a prize only one can win. And here are the closing lines of the last script that John Facenda ever read for NFL films. In Super Bowl 18, the Raiders again scaled the heights of football greatness and stood alone on the summit. A team of young men filled with promise and old veterans filled with pride. Raiders are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's present. We continue with a legendary coach and a legendary voice. In the world of pro football, there was no one John Facenda admired more than Vince Lombardi. They both carried themselves with the same kind of class and dignity. Now, here's a feature that we produced about Lombardi. And I'm sure you'll agree that the legendary coach and the legendary voice were a perfect union. Lombardi. A certain magic still lingers in the very name. speaks of duels in the snow in cold November mud.
For nine years, Lombardi coached the Green Bay Packers. He drove them to five NFL championships and victories in the first two Super Bowls. His game plans contained a minimum of simple plays executed with a maximum of effort. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. What the hell's going on out here? Everybody's grabbing out there. Nobody's tackling. Just grabbing, everybody. Grab, grab, grab. Nobody's tackling. Put your shoulders in there out there. Beneath his stormy surface flowed the warm tide of compassion and kindness. I know I'm an emotional man. In order for me, for example, to give everything of myself, uh, to take the mental anguish that's all part of this game, the emotionalism that's all part of this game, in order for me to do this for someone else, I think there has to be a certain amount of love for that other person. There's love for each other, in other words, in the game of football. Lombardi believed in the old-fashioned virtues, which were stamped all over his teams. Hard work, second effort, loyalty, and love. His genius was that he was able to inspire so many of his players to grasp these ideals. Lombardi's influence extended not only to his own team, but during his short career as head coach, many hundreds of thousands of other young athletes warm their own competitive spirits by the bright fire of this man who stood for everything that was solid and successful in American sports. He remains for many the very heart of pro football, pumping hard right now. Every year, the winner of the Super Bowl is awarded the Vincent Lombardi Trophy. His legacy is the greatest prize the game can offer. The Packers are inspired, lusty, young, and eager. The championships are won by veterans, experienced, dogged fighters who know the dry mouth of pressure. There's an old saying, the eyes are the windows of the soul. Well, in John Facenda's case, that saying could be modified to, the voice is the passageway to the heart. John reached the hearts of millions with a voice that will forever be associated with the drama and excitement of pro football. The legends of the game truly came alive when their deeds were recounted by the legendary voice of John Facenda. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of Go Network. Go.com.